right, so getting back into the arena of free will and determinism, I'd like to address some general points raised in contemporary thought concerning these matters. Apparently, a common problem that many of my online philosophical colleagues seem to struggle with, but is also a common predisposition among people in general, is this tendency of getting caught up and distracted by the illusions of sensory perception. This is the apparent extent to the event horizon for their philosophical ruminations. They accept sensory data at face value, don't find any motivation to question it, and refuse to devote any cognition to a reassessment of the subject from a meta-analytical standpoint. Don't get me wrong, they all have some good points, and perhaps understand fragments to the appearance of the truth. But overall, they generally don't want to have anything to do with the actual raw truth, which is why they consistently ignore it. I think one of the reasons why they don't want to deal with the truth is because they can't. For to deal with the truth means a possible end to the constant aimless meandering of all this philosophical masturbation. What they want to evade is the fact that what they call reality, that is, the information contained in the sensory data, is a product of the actual reality, the awareness of sensory data. They don't want to deal with this. Instead, they want to convolute and get caught up in a whole bunch of abstractions expounding the value, meaning, and purpose of the information assumed as an objectified construct. This is the essence of their positions. Intellectual narratives about the proposed concrete inner workings of a so-called objectively existing mechanical system that is really nothing more than incorporeal experiential phenomena that is completely mental in nature. This is an undeniable fact which needs no support from evidence, as it is already inherent. It's all of their faith-based intellectual beliefs about this mental phenomena that bear the burden of proof here, which can't even be put through its paces with genuine sincerity without first addressing that which provides context to the phenomena. Some idealist philosophers come closer to the truth than the rest of the lot, as they seem to somewhat understand that the purpose of an existential manifestation lies within experience itself while other materialist philosophers stand their ground as literalists, who completely reject their own agency in favor of their structured abstractions of the intellect, while hardcore, soft-boiled determinists lag not far behind, caught in the traction of their numerous contradictions, seemingly unable to decide if feelings and experiences are integral to reality, which will often depend on the mood for the day, while trying to maintain an outward appearance of hard determinism all the while continually spouting rhetoric laced with emotional appeals to agency. So some of them are further along than the others, but all of them seem to get snagged by the illusions of perceptions, and the externalizations ensue. So then it becomes a game of pointing, pointing at their own abstractions and intellectual narratives concerning the sensory illusions of properties, identities, materials, conceptual film strips, feelings, evolution, and the universe. What they don't seem to appreciate is that all of these things represent intellectual constructs about experiential phenomena produced in a purely mental context. They seem mesmerized and transfixed on the face value of it. So it's no wonder they can't engage in any metacognition and instead remain stuck in the tight confines of the self-restricting protocols of logic. I guess all the razzle-dazzle sense candy coupled with the constant yammering of their internal narratives are just too distracting for them, hence preventing them from ever seeking to obtain an outside reference. And that's a shame. But it is what it is. I have already gone over the implications of the scientifically backed findings that show that the point of effectuation, that is, that which acts as the force of will, initiating movement and creative inspiration, happens prior to conscious awareness of it, and is seated as a deeper inherent function of the subconscious mind, 
This is important to understand, as a common misconception, as demonstrated by the soft-boiled determinists' likewise erroneous assumption, is that thoughts and ideas happen first, and then a will is developed accordingly. But the research shows just the opposite. The will happens irrespective of what thoughts or desires are brewing in the sentience of the conscious mind. Not to say that the conscious mind cannot give suggestions to the subconscious. It can. But they are just suggestions, not commands that must be obeyed. It's amazing how little people know about the subconscious. The fact that people are so out of touch with this and come up with all kinds of strange ideas that this aspect of themselves is somehow prior, separate, or independent from themselves is, once again, due to what they have been conditioned to believe about sensory information. So much misunderstanding is all due to confusions with sensory perception. If you want to propose determinism as a truth in an objective format, then you have to be able to present it in an experimental demonstration. A demonstration. Of course, the simplest way would involve locking a launching device into a fixed position aimed at a pool of absolute still waters in an airtight chamber. If you shoot a rock at the water, it should create a pattern of ripples. Now, when the water has returned to absolute stillness, and you take another identical rock and shoot it at the still waters again, is the pattern of ripples exactly the same each time? A more complex way involves a little experiment that I like to refer to as the dark room test. It is an experiment that falsifies the basic tenet of determinism, which, ironically, boosts determinism's credibility, while at the same time creating space between awareness and the illusion of sensory data, so as to reintroduce ourselves to that which we take for granted and have lost basic intimacy with. If determinism is true, then there should be very little room left for variation when it comes to causal relationships. A punch to the face should always elicit the same reaction. Exposure to the same type of conditions and repeated experiments should always produce reliable, consistent results without fail. If there is any variation or effects that differ from the same type of cause, this basically destroys the notion that the dictums of cause and effect originate from an external source, which is the underlying assertion at play in all deterministic argumentation. This experiment involves a degree of sensory deprivation, which is beneficial, as the illusions of perception are the major contributing factor to the distraction that renders us unable to discern the truth of the origin of reality. So this experiment mostly takes perception out of the mix and lets one tighten up the focus of the attention. And that's the key here. Because a dark room test is a bit of a literal exposition. Something like this must be contrived because people are unaware that reality is awareness, and therefore don't have the process utility necessary for progress and meditation. Meditation would be the easiest method to disprove objective determinism. The deep meditative state is a return to potentialism, the absolute zero point. The state of complete freedom from any commitments to realize possibilities. Cause and effect is temporarily suspended in this mental superposition. So, coming out of deep meditation, the deep, empty, imaginary space devoid of all causal connection, one should emerge back into the layer of causality the same way each time. Fuck you. One should emerge back into the layer of causality the same way each time, completely stripped naked, so to speak. A bit of uniform innocence, leaping feet first into the same cold waters. So the question becomes, if a certain causal condition can be duplicated exactly the same way each time, and if a perspective can enter this condition from the exact same state each time, will the reaction when emerging from this empty position always be the same?
If so, why? If not, why not? Knowing why the state would always be the same, and thus the reaction to the causal condition would always vary, would be an understanding of the idealism that composes a reality that is fundamentally mental in composition. Answering the why not would be a defense of an abstraction about reality. That is, in this case, the hard-boiled objective realism of the determinist position. The former is an object of reality. The latter is a concept of reality. So, since most of us are totally disconnected from reality and clueless when it comes to meditation and freeing the mind from mental slavery, we'll have to contrive some kind of method with more tangible practicality. Hence, the dark room test. What you're gonna need is a windowless room, or a room that you can achieve pitch black in. A bed situated in this room, a pair of earplugs, and a journal. You should always be in normal health for the experiment to ensure a reliable default state. If you are sick or are otherwise impaired, skip that day and wait till you are in normal health again. The experiment should be conducted as follows. You go to sleep every night in this room and wake up the next day in pitch black with your hearing suppressed. These conditions should never be altered and should be exactly the same every time the experiment is repeated. Once awake, you must remain in the room and are not allowed to leave until an idea comes into your mind about what to do that day. When the idea comes into your mind, remember it. Once you have the idea, you can then turn on the lights, remove the earplugs, leave the room, and record your results in the journal. Repeat the experiment numerous times. After repeating the experiment for at least 10 times or more, the more the better, review the journal and compare the ideas you received. Seeing as how the external conditions of the experiment are identical each time, the only thing that should be a factor in the test, considering that, according to determinists, the feelings and experiential configurations of a subject are inconsequential and irrelevant to objectified material reality, you should be getting the exact same idea in your head every single time. And this would be solid proof of determinism. But... If you have any results that vary in any way, determinism cannot be said to be true. Give it a try, and let me know what you come up with. Send me the results, Charlie.